Okay. So again, uh, I'm uh, Sami Nachmuth from Intel, and uh, um, was planning to co-present with Malik, and it looks like Malik was not well; he's not able to join with us. So we will talk about the Intel firmware support package. We call it as FSP plus EDK2 for cloud. And how many of you kind of familiar with FSP? Okay, there's some. Uh, so basically, like we were kind of looking, how do we able to release a binary package that you can able to uh, build the remaining firmware uh, for creating your BIOS or your system firmware. So when we are looking at it from the CSP side, what really they are looking is we need to have a cloud firmware that you want to use a standard based mechanisms that you able to use the ecosystem and uh, develop the firmware and able to uh, deploy it in a way that it is, can be a standard based rather than a lot of proprietary interfaces there. And you want to have an open source options where the code can be made available. People, a lot of people can review so that you can able to find security problems or you can find this use able to at least uh, with the community and uh, other support you can able to find the problem and solve the problems. And at the same time, when you have a firmware, you don't want to take too much time for booting the system where it has to be quick enough to just initialize the hardware that need to initialize and get the services back to the OS for doing the remaining thing. And again, when you have firmware, you want to be easy to deploy at a scale. And you want to be able to take the firmware and get the, the firmware for, from other uh, providers and able to integrate it easily so that you can create your single firmware or uh, set of firmware that it can work together to deploy it at scale. At the same time, you want to have an uh, ecosystem support. So I think some of the things what I'm going to talk today is the is concepts. Still, uh, what we are really looking at, it is in clients, we have a FSP support, and how do we get the kind of similar model on the server side or uh, to deploy at the cloud uh, vendors? So if you look at the EFI uh, firmware, on the top you have operating system, and the, uh, the bottom you have the hardware. So in between you have a, a set of uh, firmware subsystem creates a EFI firmware, so you can say the bottom one is to really like initialize the hardware, processor and memory and uh, IO subsystems there. And then after that, you have a, a set of services that it's going to use the, the memory and uh, the base hardware that is initialized and which basically going to produce produce the operating system interfaces so that the firmware can communicate to, to the operating system. So in the bottom layer, when you look at it, if we create this, the base initialization, silicon initialization parts, and if we are able to give you a, a binary that you don't probably do need to modify it for different platforms so that you can able to handle a single socket to whatever the socket you want to define. And most of the time, you are not probably like uh, trying to modify that particular code because you want to have a well-tested uh, uh, code that you can be able to use it. Then you need to just focus on the platform part that you are adding specifically any value add that you want to go, going to bring into the, your uh, platform. Um, then if I, even for that, if I can create a yeah, mint platform uh, model where I can able to provide a, a sample code, from that I can able to uh, put the operating system, then you have the minimum base functionality for you to uh, work with. 
and again most of the time the, the operating system interface is again standard based as long as if it is well implemented then you can able to reuse and you can able to put your operating system so so basically like the intel fsp is the the basic intel silicon related initialization part and you have the edk2 framework that it can take the fsp and put the operating system and today what we when you look at it it's it's a pa and edk2 based where i can replace the fsp part and still use most of the edk2 framework and able to boot the system so if you do that you get a multiple different advantages because there are people looking at edk2 and uh, there is a core boot and a linux boot lot of different activities going on right so like i said the <coughs> so you can think of the three layers on uh, uh, bios intel fsp and you have minimum platform and you have the edk2 framework to uh, uh, create your uh, uh, sub final bios again if you look at the intel fsp you want a silicon related apis to um, really talk to the silicon part of it and you want to have a platform related edk uh, the platform related apis to deal with the platform part and you want to have a edk2 standard apis to uh, communicate between the operating system and the to the rest of the subsystems there excuse me <clears throat> again if you take the fsp and if you look at uh, uh, internally you can think of the fsp as uh, the basic uh, um, processor ram or temporary initialization where you can you able to run your base um, code running where you can able to write in a c or uh, even if you can have it in assembly depending on how you want to do that at the end of the day you want to create enough framework so that you can able to run the security subsystem as well as uh, memory initialization and uh, the processor link initializations then able to uh, give a interface for that to talk to the platform part of it so again you can think of uh, multiple different layers i just put a couple of things on the bottom you have a fsp and if you look at the the core boot of how it's going to use it you are basically giving control to core boot and again calls the fsp and again gives a control back to core boot and finally you are getting the operating system and if you are looking at a normal standard efi today you have a sec phase and you have a pa phase dixie and uh, yeah pds and you are uh, giving control to the operating system now if when you have fsp instead of giving a pi you can think of <coughs> again fsp you are using for either edk2 boot core boot linux boot whatever uh, your choice of support you want to have you can able to support that and again we want to have a, the library that you can able to our binary that you can publicly distribute it as long as uh, you are able to distribute it you can able to provide a open source mechanism to build a final image that you can able to load to your system that you can if you want to test it you can do the testing there and again if you want to slice it further right you want to have platform interfaces and so the fsp is providing the silicon part of it you do need to build your own platform and depending on what uh, the code base you're going to use you want to have some way of uh, uh, initializing the platform subsystem again when you're going to use a edk frame framework and it's going to talk to fsp you want to have a mechanism abstracted such that it's clearly uh, what is it platform part and also the boot hooks like security hooks that you if you are going to use fsp instead of using edk2 base 3 then take fsp you want to look like the regular uh, 
the boot, still you want to make sure that the all the security related boot hooks are there. And again, runtime, if you are going to have a RAS initialization or RAS that you are going to do, uh, handle at runtime, <coughs> you may want to deploy it as part of a, a binary that is all validated that you could use to do the runtime part. And you may, again, you want to give a different parameters to your initialization so that you can able to uh, set up the configuration parts. And whatever you want, want payload you want to have, still you want to use the EDK2 payload here if you want to boot EDK2. And I think the, the best thing is once you have FSP, the, the framework for EDK2 is the another important part. If you want to agree on what is the right framework for servers, dealing with servers, and uh, the changes would be needed uh, so when we are adding additional changes to the FSP part. And again, once uh, even if I give the FSP, you have a EDK2 base framework, but still you need to add specific ways to handle the errors depending on your silicon or other features, it might change. You might have some RAS features that uh, it needs a runtime handling that you need to add and uh, security things that you probably want, whatever you want to deploy, you want to add those things before you can able to really deploy and use it. So those are additional things that you need to consider. So in summary, we would like to get a FSP that can be used on multiple different areas so that you can release one FSP and work with the EDK2 as well as to other ecosystems. And uh, again, when you are using EDK2, you want to define the interfaces uh, clearly that whatever you are trying to adopt, that it can be adopted. So we do have a Intel FSP uh, available on GitHub. <coughs> and again, work with the YSF uh, to define the server uh, FSP interfaces <coughs> on payloads so that it can be used on multiple uh, ecosystems properly. Okay, I can take some questions if you have. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. So it's fully open is a kind of a, uh, question mark, right? It's basically like when you define the silicon and uh, the silicon is not yet uh, released, then you cannot provide it, uh, provide the things, right? And even if you have the uh, silicon is released, <coughs> there are parts uh, depending on what particular uh, part of the silicon, right, that you are going to deal with, there may be a lot of different SKUs and uh, who's adopting what, what is public and what is not uh, proprietary, right? So there are uh, issues there. So at the end, we are kind of looking what can be open, right? And uh, we are trying to look, uh, this is the set of standard things that we can keep it open. Some of the FSP, that, that's why you're saying it's a binary release, right? It's, a, it's still not a, a publicly released <coughs> source code. <clears throat> but uh, <clears throat> some of the major vendor has access to those code, right? And like what we do today on a normal uh, uh, source code. It's uh, the whole source code is not open, I'll come there. And uh, some of the code that you are able to get it uh, based on the vendors and some, most of the framework is open. Good. Yeah, good. building is a plus, the, the, 
the idea that you can't, you don't have source, means at, at a particularly difficult stage of, of the development and debug of a system, you can't actually debug. So, so if you look at today, microcode is released as a binary and it's well-defined interface. When you have a problem, then you know what uh, uh, need to be debugged, how you need to be contacted. And even if you look at uh, all the I.O. devices today, you are getting a binary and uh, not I.O. device vendors are not releasing open source. So, you are able to debug as long as well-defined interface that allows you to understand what you are expecting, then you can able to debug. That is why we are kind of saying, as a silicon part, it is a well defined interface as well as uh, the minimum functionality, right. If we, you have too big a uh, blob, it is very, you might have problems in a lot of places. If it is small blob, it is probably much more controlled way that you can able to uh, debug and uh, work with it. That is what we are kind of expecting. Yeah. 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 Also, going on that, I guess, um, I do work for the German Federal Office for Information Security. Um, we have problems trusting code which we can't see. So, of course, we can disassemble and hold stuff, but that's sort of pointless because, uh, first of all, disassembly is not always going to be straightforward. Uh, and the other problem is um, if you are trying to look for backdoors for, well, deliberate uh, debugging features, you could call them that way, um, it's way easier to look uh, at the C source code than to look at some disassembled binary. So uh, for us, um, executing FSP um, means we would probably have to run it in x86 emulator. Um, trying to filter out all the hardware accesses and then just checking those hardware accesses against a list of what we expect, which is sort of stupid having an like, x86 emulator in the firmware. And then again, it would address some of the trust issues, but uh, having source code available for uh, most of the FSP modules, obviously you have to strip it down to make sure that no unreleased silicon is referenced, etc. So it is uh, an effort which takes time and probably also money, but it, having the source code, even if it's just for the particular SKU you have, would really help building trust. There's some other silicon vendors uh, give you the source code if you ask nicely. <laughs> So there's, so, there's two part, right? Whether you want to have source code or you want to have open source code, right? True, that's two points. Yeah. Right. Well, having it open would be easier because then we could uh, just tell various researchers to take a look at that stuff uh, without any NDAs and be the easiest way forward. Yeah, that's the battle that uh, yeah everybody is dealing with it, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So we want to reduce it as much as possible, right? Good. No, like I said, min platform is to minimum to boot. Right. You may not have the whole functionality for you to deploy. That's what we kind of, like I said, right? It's uh, kind of, we are going through th thinking and discussions, right? So the thinking here is we have uh, FSP and kind of min platform package for you to get started, right? Then uh, you want to have a <coughs> very well defined interfaces for FSP. Then uh, that uh, able to meet multiple different boot uh, scenarios. When you have those things, then you can have the same model. But again, like I said, like we want to get feedback. 
and what is the kind of interesting things for you, and we need to go back and address that. So my question is really is that for all the future right. uh, reference platforms right. of uh, Intel, Correct. future SOCs, will Intel make the effort of making the main platform source code for all those reference platforms available to the public without NDA? Does that make sense? So that, that's, we are kind of looking into that, right? Okay. Right. What what can be done to enable the things with FSB? Okay. Right. <coughs> That's what you're looking. Okay. Uh, Good. So I, my question. I was just looking at your yeah. GitHub repo with sure. FSB binary. Right. Nice to see, but we <coughs> know that a lot of the vendors do have the source, and they may modify it. Would you consider putting a list of, like, say, for the Skylake? Okay. Suppose, you, you know right. Okay. 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 I can't really tell with a given one if I'll actually work on a motherboard I have. Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think if you have some OCP list hardware, yeah. then you know exactly what is what got validated there. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. We will take an. Yeah. Helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I, Good. I think at the very least, uh, if an FSP is released for a particular SOC, then the Intel reference board can be assumed to have been validated. Okay. Right. I, I will take that feedback, yes, definitely. Okay, anything else? Doctor, thank you very much.